Welcome everybody. What an intro. Uh, thank you to our wonderful uh, marketing team for putting that together. We're so pleased that you all have decided to join us here today on what is a beautiful Thursday afternoon. We're sending you uh, all the best uh, in digital flourishing to wherever you may be joining us from. My name is Tyler Rice. I am the co-founder and the COO here at the Digital Wellness Institute. And I'm just so excited to unveil the Digitally Balanced Workplace Certification along with some incredible uh, people here today. Uh, today, I am joined by Patrick Haino. He's the Vice President of Corporate, uh, Corporate Business Development at Mansueto Ventures. Mansueto is the organization that publishes Fast Company and Inc. Prior to tackling this role, Patrick helped Inc. expand its Inc. 5000 franchise, achieving the scope and breadth that helped the franchise cement its iconic status. I'm pleased to have worked with him in the development of this project, and I really couldn't be more excited to share the program with our listeners today. So Patrick, a big warm welcome to you. <laughs> Thank you all, happy to be here. Yeah, uh, we are also joined by Sarah Cannon. Sarah is the head of solutions at the Digital Wellness Institute, uh, and she works with our partners to bring digital balance to organizations. Sarah, a big welcome to you as well. Thanks, Tyler. Excited to be here. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Patrick, you know, I wanted to start uh, with you. Uh, my business partner, Amy Blankson, and I, we approached Mansueto back in the fall to uh, really think about this idea, right? We wanted to partner on an initiative to highlight what we were thinking of as the top digitally balanced workplaces with Fast Company. And, you know, I'm curious, when we first approached you, what did you think when you heard the term digital wellness? That, that, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, right off the bat, I think intuitively, I feel like uh, digital wellness, I got it, but got it only in the sense of, of what it means not to have it. At least that, that, that was my sort of initial response. What, what does it mean to, uh, you know, to have an excess of, of technology or reliance never turning off? So that, that, that's really what came to mind initially. Uh, now we spent a lot of time talking about it. You, you and your team have educated me, uh, and I think it's a lot more interesting. And we'll cover that today. Like, what does it mean to actually be digitally balanced? Is is, is the more important fac facet of it? You know, and 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 to that point, uh, I think so much of what resonates is the negative, and we try to stay away from that because we are uh, an organization that's rooted in, in flourishing and positive psychology. And yet terms like distraction, Zoom fatigue, the loss of well-being, the loss of productivity, as soon as I say that to you know, uh, an organization, they immediately get it. They immediately feel what it is like to be digitally unwell or digitally unbalanced. So we really wanted to think about coming up with a name that encapsulated that in a positive way. And when you say, you know, uh, uh, hi, I'm Patrick, and I, I'm here to talk to you about the Inc. 5000 best list, that immediately resonates, that immediately lands. Um, what did the Mansueto team find resonated with others about the term digital balance and digitally balanced workplace? Um, well, it's in the name, right? The, um, and, and the workplace, actually, I'll, I'll start with that. I think it, it's very important because uh, of course you want to assume your own, uh, you know, your own relationship with technology and with the digital world. Uh, but you know there will be technology in the workplace. Uh, it, it, we're in 2024. It's only normal that there'll be a lot uh, around you. The companies do and should leverage it uh, as much as they could, as much as makes sense. Uh, but what's the point at which you are out of balance? What does it mean to have digital balance? And, and what does it mean for a company to be, you know, a digitally balanced workplace? Uh, there's a set of policies, there's a culture, uh, cert certain practices. There, I mean, there's a way to be deliberate and, and, and conscious in how you address it. And, uh, you know, being balanced is the ultimate goal because uh, we want to be healthy, productive, have great retention, have great, uh, you know, hiring practices. All of that really is encompassed. It, it, it's so pervasive. Uh, and I think the name just does a good job of keeping that, uh, you know, sort of front of mind. Precisely. Thank you for sharing that. You know, it's important to define it as well, Patrick, because I think um, so often we think about organizations or, or institutions that are on the, 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 the forefront of, you know, social, you know, movements or, or movements in, in, in psychology and, and wellness. And I, I often think about what I would have answered if somebody asked me 50 years ago, how is my mental health? 
or how is the mental health of my employees? I wouldn't have had a construct to be able to understand or answer that. Um, and so as we define it, when we talk about digital balance, it is an organization uh, that creates a sense of balance, belonging, and boundaries for its employees. Um, so Sarah, you know, I'd love to introduce you and, and, and invite you back into the conversation. I know that prior to joining the Digital Wellness Institute, you you in fact came from the world of surveys and recognition, uh, specifically the Great Places to Work uh, program. So tell me what about this program is unique from others? Sure. Well, I do come from the wonderful world of Great Place to Work. I'm happy to report that um, a number of companies that have already signed up and are going through the digitally balanced workplace process are a great place to work certified. So this is really a complement to that recognition. But what's unique about our survey is the world changed in 2020, right? And our survey measures the impact that technology has on the employee experience. And other employee surveys just aren't measuring that. And digital balance is essential for high performing companies and high performing teams. So it's crucial to take that into account. Um, I would say, you know, those are the unique things. And then I would add that our survey is much shorter. It's only 16 questions. Patrick, back to you. When you are thinking about digital wellness or digital balance as a whole, um, from Mansueto Properties' perspective, um, uh, being you know Inc. or Fast Company, what are some of the headlines that we're seeing? What are the topics that are coming up in the past few years related to this issue? Well, if you if you go on uh, fastcompany.com, you you might um, notice we you know the, the way the website is set up. We don't have a whole lot of you know navigation tabs. Uh, you know, like news, uh, tech, uh, design, and then work life. I mean, it's that important a topic to us. And, and it, it, and it really, the, the topic we're, we're discussing today and the practices that, that, you know, you're, you're bringing to the world, those, those are really central to a lot of the articles that are covered in there, uh, work life balance, uh, technology being central to what fast company covers just in the recent past. I um, mean, you know, I share them later. The, we've had some, articles about, you know, how not to be, you know, the, the need to not be responsive 24 seven, just to impress the boss kind of thing, or uh, how in the healthcare industry, uh, a couple of companies actually harness technology to avoid burnout, and how to play with that. Uh, very, you know, very uh, compelling articles that, that tackle the program. So we write about it all the time. And that's why we're, we're really thrilled to be teaming up with you on, on this important topic. Um, well, we're, we couldn't we couldn't be more excited either. Um, I, I'm so glad that that we're partnering with you in particular, Patrick, and Fast Company, because like so many organizations, um, uh, it's a topic that that needs to be covered more. And, and Fast Company is bringing so much light, so much attention to it. Um, and, and I always ground kind of some of our conversations in this data, and, and it shows uh, that you know between 2010 and 2022. It shows workplace uh, employees' responses to the question, to what degree do you feel your company cares about you? And just about a year ago, our team at the Digital Wellness Institute, we published a white paper called The Missing Metric. And it highlights the fact that so many organizations, their approach towards employee wellness, they haven't changed for years, right? This means that they're not accounting for the impact that elevated rates of screen time and so much connection has on the employee experience. In essence, they're, you know, they're missing, they're missing the mark. Uh, and what we do, what we see is we, we see that in the data here, right? When uh, COVID happened uh, right around 2020, we saw a huge increase in employees' perceptions of their workplace caring about them, right? Uh, tech stacks, uh, employee wellness programs, care packages, all of these were sent out to employees. Uh, but what we saw with each kind of subsequent wave of the pandemic and in the years since, the feeling of their workplace caring about them has gone back to record lows. And I often wonder why, what, what changed? Well, frankly, our screen time, right? It, it, it increased an average of five hours per person per day over that time. So given the fact that technology has upended really every single dimension of the employee experience, I, I shouldn't our core pillars of employee wellness or our core models of employee well-being also account for its impact. Um, so that's what this, this program does, right? This program really reorients traditional pillars of employee wellness around the way that screen time 
impacts the employee experience and it integrates digital wellness into everything from employee health to well being to retention and productivity, Patrick, as you mentioned. Um, so the way that we set this out was to really measure three core dimensions. We measure screen balance, we measure digital inclusion and belonging, and we also measure digital boundaries. And what we found was that when organizations improved their digital balance score by 10 percent, they actually saw a correlated positive increase in uh, uh, business metrics that they care most about, including a 22 percent reduction in burnout, 20 percent reduction in job stress, 27% reduction in employees' turnover intentions, and an 8% reduction in depressive symptoms amongst employees. So apart from these benefits, which, which are, are, are incredible, and I'm so, so excited to kind of share and, and, and bring to the forefront of, of, this, uh, of this burgeoning marketplace, Patrick, could you walk us through kind of the recognition that employers are going to receive as a result of their partici participation in this program? Uh Yes. Well, first, I want to go back to the prior slide, Tyler, Please. and uh, put on my ink hat, ink hat there. 27% turnover decrease is is real money. Uh, that That is a tangible, That I mean, that is massive. Just wanted to put it, <laughs> emphasize that. Uh, but, but, uh, but to your question, like, what's the, what's the benefit here? Uh, I also want to emphasize that the, the benefit is, uh, built into the program in and of itself, right? The, the process of paying attention, uh, applying best practices with regards to, uh, you know, what it takes to create a digitally balanced workplace, that in and of itself is, is, is of immense value. But beyond that, together, we're creating this program here, uh, where, for instance, in, uh, in July, we'll be able to highlight the, the top 10, uh, you know, chosen companies with regards to uh, to the topic at hand. And subsequently, we'll make this uh, on a fast company uh, highlight and, and and showcase really the, the top 100 companies uh, that, that that are displaying, you know, the, the best and greatest practices with regards to digital balance. Um, and for those that are certified, uh, and we saw those numbers here of tremendous impact, uh, there's the opportunity to you know, try to leverage the uh, the affiliation, really lean into the certification, uh, you use the badge and just, you know, tell the world about it. And, uh, and, and this ought to be a direct through line with uh, recruiting and applications and uh, interest in, in working at those companies that, that show they care. And I, I see that particularly too with, um, you know, younger entrants into the workforce. I think uh, so much of the data that we see at the Digital Wellness Institute and the research is related to, you know, Generation Z, Gen Z, and millennial employees really standing up to the way that work has traditionally been done. And I don't mean traditionally, traditionally, I mean the way that work's been done over the past five to 10 years, right? This feeling of always on, this feeling of constant connectivity. And I think we saw that a lot in you know, the great resignation and, you know, quiet quitting and, and kind of these, 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 these core themes that have been written about extensively over the past few years. Do you see this, Patrick, as, as kind of a, a, an emblem or a marker for organizations to really attract and, and stand out to those workers who care deeply about work-life balance, about, you know, their own mental health, about, you know, showing up each day to be the best version of themselves and the most productive version? without feeling like they need to give a portion of themselves away to the organization? Uh, well, absolutely. But, but I think I would go beyond that. I mean, just, just even on a personal level, I put, you know, put an X to my generation letter in. Uh, and, and and the appetite for, for balance, right? It, it just really, uh, I, I'm not sure that it's confined to the younger set. Uh uh, like people are trying to reassess what it means to be a productive worker, to be a, you know, to be great for your, for your company, to have a fulfilling career and a fulfilling life. And, and the key to that in many ways is your relationship, uh, you know, to, to your working hours, to your tools and to the technology that that's in your hand and, and, and just never leaves it. So. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Cause you're right. I, I think it's, it's, it's common, um, uh, it's common for us to say, well, it's something that younger people care about, Gen Z uh, or, or, or millennials, but you're absolutely right. Like, this is something that impacts every single person in the workforce today. Yeah. Sarah, you know, I wanted to bring you back into the conversation. And, and one of the things that I've often heard from um, 
uh, partners or prospective partners is, you know, this is such a new topic. I get it, but I don't feel like we're digitally balanced. You know, what, 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 what can you share or, or can you tell us about kind of the paths that we offer for people that feel like they get it and they love it and they aspire to it, but frankly, they don't think that they're quite there yet. Sure. I love that question. Um, usually with these sorts of programs, you either certify and you get a badge or you don't. And another unique component to this program is if you do not meet the threshold to be certified as a digitally balanced workplace, um, in this first year, you're actually going to receive a pending badge. So that shows that your company is committed to doing the work for digital balance and um, Digital Wellness Institute will be right alongside you to, to work with you to help ingrain that into your culture. But it's just it's a really nice part of this program that we get to offer um, that pending badge. So um, I think that that helps with lessening the fear for people to take the survey because you don't know what you don't know. So it's important to get that feedback from the employees. And say a company is interested in, in, in going through this process, Sarah, what are the next steps? Sure. Well, what I would add to that, speaking to your, um, you know, about the great resignation, really to quantify that, I, I read an interesting report that said 68% of millennials and 81% of Gen Z left their jobs between 2020 and 2022. And it was for mental health reasons relating to overwhelming and unsustainable work. And why I want to address that is it's very clear that they're looking for work-life boundaries, balance, and belonging. And companies that are highlighting their commitment to that are going to attract that talent. Um, so that's, you know, another feature of, you know, promoting this recognition. Um, but we've made it very easy to go through the process and there's plenty of time for those companies or teams within companies that want to sign up for this first year. So you can register right at the website, digitalwellnessinstitute.com. And the survey fee is $2,095. And that includes the assessment, the five-page summary, and then the Fast Company badge licensing. And then we'll send out the survey for your employees. And again, the survey is 100% based on feedback from the employees. And the survey takes less than three minutes, 16 questions. And then following the close of the survey, we offer a complimentary results review. So we can go through those results, um, share any opportunities, and then discuss how to promote the recognition. Thank you, Sarah. You know, I think one of the things that, um, again, I'm, I'm most excited about is the scientific underpinnings of, of this uh, of this index. Um, and so uh, for, for our, our marketing team, for Nate, if you wouldn't mind uh, dropping a link to that download in the chat, uh, I would love our, our, our viewers or attendees to be able to see kind of the, the, the academic rigor that was put into this from our research team um, with, uh, uh, you know, connections to the digital flourishing scale uh, and how we really derived those three pillars, balance, belonging, and boundaries. Um, really excited about that and would love to share that with, with, with uh, the attendees here today. So Patrick, let's talk about eligibility. You know, who is, uh, who is eligible to receive, um, to receive, you know, certification? Uh, all right. So we want a, uh, but there needs to be a certain size, right? So we're thinking about 30 employees minimum, uh, it need not just be a company, though. It could be a, a self-contained unit uh, within uh, a larger company that can, uh, you know, that can take the process and, and implement and and really uh, follow through on the uh, on the assessment. So, so it, again, it need not be a full corporation if there's a unit of at least thirty employees, and uh, half of them have to be uh, what you would call uh, like screen, uh, we call it screen bound, or like knowledge workers that have, uh, you know, a, a direct, intimate and continuous relationship in their work uh, with technology. So if half of the employees uh, at minimum follow that, that, that threshold, then in any area of the world, in any industry, at any level of revenue, your company is eligible. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Sarah, um, with regards to frequently asked questions. And we're going to save some time here at the end for FAQs from, from the audience. But can you just walk us through some of the FAQs that you that you typically come across uh, and speak to those? 
Absolutely. So um, answers to those questions, you know, the survey is confidential and private and the results are aggregated. It's aggregated data. So there's no identifiable, identifiable employee information that we collect on our end. Um, and then again, the survey is very straightforward and we've purposefully made it a very easy process. Um, so from the time you sign up until the time the survey closes, the, the full process is less than three weeks. Um, so not a lot of time um, on those who are helping us, you know, our main contacts and helping us to send that survey out. And then lastly, um, the survey is um, scientifically valid measurement that correlates to, um, you know, those drivers you mentioned earlier. So NPS, burnout, turnover, stress, resilience, and depression. Sarah, who is the ideal like champion? So if, if somebody in the audience is attending today and they say, you know, this is amazing, like, I would love to bring this to my organization, but I don't have necessarily authority to do so. Um, who, who would you say is the best person to get in contact with? Well, so they can sign, they can go to our website and fill out a form and then I'm, I'm happy to reach out um, to their organization. But, you know, it really depends on the organization. We're working with companies of all sizes and then teams within companies. So, um, what's been really great about this program, again, that is different than a lot of other recognition or certification programs, is there has been a number of companies where there's teams within a large company that really um, showcase what it is to be digitally well. And so they're, you know, they raise their hands and they're like, we want to participate in this. So um, if it's a specific team, then it would be the leader of that team. And then um, by and large, I'm typically working with people leaders, HR, um, and working a lot with the marketing teams too. Awesome. And I know too, for um, for, for some folks, there's, there's a, a nominate your company form uh, on our website, I believe, um, where they can submit that. And um, that's something that, you know, even if they don't know somebody within HR um, to be able to pass the survey along, that gets back to you. And then you can reach out to, to the HR person and say, hey, we had 10 people from your company, you know, recommend your organization. This would be a great fit. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And you can even put in that form why you think that your company is a digitally balanced workplace. And then that will help me. Um, <laughs> and then I, I'm happy to, to do the legwork and reach out to the proper channels. Amazing. Thank you so much. I want to save plenty of time for questions uh, here, uh, but before doing so, uh, Patrick, in closing, anything to add related to kind of this 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 program, this model, um, Any anything you wanted to share with the audience? Um, well, first, I want to share the fact that uh, I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the, the editorially, we plan on, on, on showcasing, highlighting the, the top 10 digitally balanced uh, workplaces. Uh, while well, there's a sort of, you know, a, a writer's deadline and process there. So uh, to be eligible for us to, to give coverage on that, uh, I think they have to have completed the certification by May 31st uh, of this year. We'll have the feature coming out in, in July. Uh, so I think that's important to know. Uh, beyond that, I'm very excited uh, about this program. I keep, uh, you know, I... Every time I get back to it, I, uh, you know, I learn more about it and its importance. And, uh, and, and I think discovering what are the levers that make a place digitally balanced is, is, is really a fascinating uh, process. Agreed. Agreed. Wonderful. Well, uh, I think we've covered all of this. So I'm going to stop sharing and um, would love to open up the Q&A chat function here to see uh, what kind of questions we have. And Nate, um, if you are able to, to send, uh, send any my way, I'd, I'd, uh, I'll keep an eye out for that. Um, I think the first question is, uh, is this offering applicable to businesses that are outside of the U.S.? Uh, Sarah, could you answer that for us? Yes, uh, we did just decide that this week that we're going to open it up to other countries. Is that, am I correct in saying that? Time? It is correct. That is correct. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, translation is, is a, a, is a question. So we, uh, we, we were able to translate the survey into uh, currently, I believe 10 or so different languages, um, but that we can obviously talk about, um, you know, translation as, as, as it, as it comes up on a per case basis. Great question. 
Uh, we have another question about the, um, uh, oh yes, about how, how it is related to the digital flourishing survey. So what we did was we took uh, 66 items uh, and what we found was that the pillars, uh, balance, belonging, and boundaries actually correlate to five dimensions of the digital flourishing uh, scale. Um, and so it's all, uh, it's all gonna be in that document that is included here. Um, so do keep an eye out for that. Let's see, what other products or comp uh, complement the FAST Company certification? Sarah, do you mind walking through that one? Sure, so um, as part of the survey process, we do offer that complimentary results review and that really gives us an opportunity to dig through those results and see where there are opportunities for possible interventions um, within the organization and um, or within a team within the organization. And um, we have been putting together programs, you know, digital, digital wellness programs um, customized for organizations based on what those survey results are showing. And that's anything from, you know, our momentum events, which are keynotes that can be done virtually or um, in person even, um, and, you know, educational workshops, we, we have a number of solutions. I don't know if you want me to go through all of them. But um, I, I would say that we're able and happy to curate a program based off of what the, the data tells us from the survey. So it really does all start with the survey. And I think that's the key part there. It's, it's leveraging the data um, and the analytics derived from the survey to inform what services or, or programs make, make the most uh, sense. Um, and then Sarah, can you share with us the two different levels of uh, insights that a potential partner can derive from us? Sure, so that $2,095 um, dollar, um, entry, what, um, that I mentioned that's on the website now, that's our base package. And that does include just a high level um, assessment um, of the organization or the team overall once the survey is has closed and you'll get a, a PDF report that you can um, utilize and dig into afterwards as well. And then we also have a second tier above that. And that's uh, $49.95, I believe. And you're getting um, a lot deeper insights there. We actually have a burnout report, um, correlations between the, the balance, belonging, and boundaries as well. Um, so if you're looking for um, department level uh, data, that would be the package to go with. And, and happy to jump on a call and show examples of what that looks like as well, because it's, it's a lot to digest. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you, Sarah. Patrick, a question for you. Um, can you share a little bit more about what kind of profiles will be featured for the organizations that are certified uh, or recognized as digitally balanced? Oh, <laughs> uh, thanks. Yes. Uh, well, it's it's really it's a presence on on the Fast Company website, and uh, it, it's really a brief write up uh, about the company, what it does, uh, and then we include a few key. Um, sort of like bizzographic item, you know, where they are in the industry and so on. And, and we add, uh, because this is so sort of like employee centric, we'll also add a, a link uh, to any kind of either job boards or you know, career uh, pages that you might have, uh, which, you know, will have direct, uh, you know, correlation for the readers there. But uh, I think further, I think it, it, it might play pretty well in search. Perfect. Thank you, Patrick. And, and I think one of our uh, last questions here is, uh, is in, an, in a university setting, can we seek certification through a student-focused initiative or do we also need HR uh, to survey faculty and staff? That's a good question. I, I, can, I can take a, a, a stab at that one. Um, we've worked with universities in the past, uh, Virginia Tech as, as one of the certified digitally well universities. Um, and if we were to work with the staff and the administration at a university, um, truly any anybody within that organization or within, within an institution who is uh, the authority to you know, survey uh, the, the faculty and, and administration uh, is the, the right point of contact. So it'll differ between institutions, um, but if you are trying to get your university certified as a digitally balanced workplace, again, for the faculty and staff, um, then, then it, it's, it's a great program for that. Uh, and again, Sarah can answer any additional questions that, that may arise. 
Without further questions, um, I wanted to close out by just thanking uh, first Patrick, uh, you for you know partnership and and Fast Company for really bringing this this vision to life. It's been so many years in the making, and I think we're at the forefront of uh, just a beautiful and brilliant um, uh, you know program together. So thank you for Very your time. Thank you. Thank you. Really excited to have you, Sarah. Thank you so much for for for, for joining and for answering some of those. Uh, some, some of those deeper questions. And for all the attendees who are just so appreciative for you being here, we're excited to bring that digital balance forward. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, hopefully seeing your organizations listed on the top 10 list this summer. And if not then, uh, potentially the top 100 list to come out in February of 2025. So thank you all so much for joining. We appreciate it. So awesome.